All right, it's an easy ball down the line. If you could just sweep this one up, that'd be sick, my lad. Oh. <laughs> I guess you could say I really put my neck on the line there. Hey, gaffer, get him off. I swear to the heavens, mate. It's that time of the week once again. I mean, I say that it literally changes every single day of the week. I mean, it's football this week. FTW is back once again to give you the stupidest, best and just most ridiculous action in the world of football online and on social media. Now, I feel like I'm always saying this, but I just wanted to say a massive thank you for the support on FTW week in, week out. It seems like really whatever the topic of the video is, you guys just want to watch it. So that means a lot to me honestly now this week is gonna be a tiny bit different straight off the bat because we're jumping headfirst into ranting season now if you've been following english football recently you may know the sad stories of berry and bolton wanderers they're both league one sides in the third tier of english football and they've both been going through ridiculous financial issues it's a shame we coming down center here and it's uh front of it bloody falling up I hope it never does. Now this week it was announced that after several deadlines, Berry were going to be expelled from League One. So they are basically just completely cast adrift. They are removed. The club itself is not in English football anymore. It, it basically doesn't exist now. On the same day, Bolton Wanderers were given a further two-week deadline. This is what Berry were given two weeks ago. Since then, and literally as I'm recording this, Bolton have been bought out by a new company. Now that's all well and good, but for Berry fans, I mean, I imagine waking up and your club just doesn't exist anymore. I didn't even know there was a football team called Barry, to be honest with you. What do you mean? How can you buy a football team when you didn't even know there was a football team in this? Oh, I give up, man. Why buy something you have no idea about? I wouldn't buy a subscription to Playboy magazine because I don't know what it is. I swear, I've never even heard of it in my life. I'm, a, I'm an innocent. This is a massive example of the EFL letting down its own clubs. How can you have a fit and proper system to decipher whether own are fit and ready to take over a club when they don't even know the club they're taking over. All right, yeah, now, final question, Steve. Uh, what actually is the name of this club? Pff, uh, Macclesfield? Yeah, that seems close enough to me. If I'm going to be honest, the EFL should be ashamed. The actual management and handling of this situation has been catastrophic from start to finish. They're constantly mismanaging these situations, like with Coventry, with Bolton Wanderers at the moment as well. I don't know how many times it's going to take a club in the Football League to go into severe financial crisis before they actually start implementing serious obstacles for fraudulent businessmen who are trying to rip clubs away from the local supporters. As for Steve Dale, the former owner of Berry, who doesn't seem to care about the fans or the actual staff at the club, the only solace I can take is that in waiting for a better offer and therefore causing the death of the club, hopefully he has been rinsed dry of everything he put forward into the club in the first place. That is at least a loss in itself for him. I'm guessing his accounts and income are now as badly maintained as his facial hair. And if you thought I was done with the ranting there, no, I'm not, I'm afraid to tell you. Sky Sports actually displayed a countdown till the deadline. I just, what is wrong with you? This isn't transfer deadline day or some other stupid gimmick you do on your news station. This is people's livelihoods, the clubs they adore and love and have seen for 40, 50 years. It's those clubs dying in front of them and you're counting down as if it's some mega event. I really hope there can be some kind of revival for Bury or at least a Phoenix club for the side. And I also hope that Bolton do actually get out of this crisis as well, but there's certain people that really need to look at themselves. Now in Premier League news, otherwise known as the only league that Sky Sports care about, Crystal Palace defeated Manchester United at Old Trafford thanks to a 90th minute winner from Patrick Van Arnold. I think it's like the first time United have ever lost thanks to a 90th minute winner at Old Trafford or some stupid stat like that. Only they could slap up Chelsea 4-0, draw to Wolves and then lose to Crystal Palace. Daniel James scored again, then brought out the Kylian Mbappe celebration. Mate, you've drawn level against the side managed by Roy Hodgson. He genuinely thought he could have got Liverpool relegated once. This is getting through zombies round four on COD, not defeating everyone in 300. This is Sparta! <laughs> 
Chelsea beat Norwich 3-2, but Timu Puki scored again. This man is actually an animal. 999, what is your emergency? Yeah, basically, this Finnish striker, right? Mm hmm yeah. He plays for Norwich, yeah, and basically he's on fire again. It's like the second time this week. We'll have someone out immediately. Some people say that Timu Puki is his own parent's legal guardian. Some say that Timu Puki doesn't actually park his car. It's just that the whole world stops spinning whilst he's not moving. Some people say Timu Puki's first words were the whole Old and New Testament, and then that's when someone wrote the Bible. Tottenham lost 1-0 to Newcastle. I don't have anything funny to say about that. That is a joke in itself. Liverpool beat Arsenal 3-1 in what was probably technically the biggest game of the weekend. It ended up looking like quite a comfortable scoreline, but we definitely could have been better in the first half. Arsenal could have easily taken the lead in the first half. David Luiz got absolutely skinned for the final goals. He's really taken on where Laurent Koscielny left. But it's not all bad news because Ty from Arsenal Fan TV looked delighted. Because this is the same team that went close last season and didn't, and didn't win and we scored against them. Now, if it was Manchester City, would we have scored against we Manchester City? We didn't win, though, did we? You know, but if now, over in the Bulgarian League, we have probably a contender for moment of the season already. Now, forward Wanderson converts from a cross. It looks like it's going to be 1-0 to the host. He jumps over the advertising boards, but it becomes apparent the linesman has flagged for offside. The game gets underway as the goalkeeper kicks it long. Meanwhile, Wanderson is still completely unaware and goes to kiss his girlfriend as his Celebration. I just don't understand where any of that he thought like surely you'd notice that none of your teammates were celebrating with you overall It's an absolute travesty Bernardo, what are you, why did you just half volley my ankle? Listen, mate, you've always got to be prepared. You never know when that's going to happen in the game. What are you talking about? I'm on your team. Grimsby Town had their Carabao Cup second round tie abandoned due to some light drizzle around the stadium. I genuinely think that might be an apocalypse. Surely that can be categorized at hurricane level. I can only imagine the state of the pitch during the second half. Play it down the channel, mate. What, the football channel or the English channel? Which one do you mean? If the game had gone ahead, the referee for this match was Darren Drysdale. His name was Darren Drysdale in conditions like this. To be honest, I'm glad he didn't do a pitch inspection. Because much like Kevin De Bruyne in a nightclub in 2014, he would have literally been drowning in it. Yeah, should be a threat from set pieces. There's no doubt about that. Rashford lined it up as well. Way! Are you looking for a lawn clipper? Because with Marcus Rashford's free kick ability, you can find just that. For just four easy payments of $29.99, you can have your very own lawn mower. Get your Marcus Rashford today. Right, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know how to introduce the next part of this video, but we're just gonna do it anyway. K-pop Twitter is at war with football Twitter, and I'll be honest, I don't actually know why. All I know is K-pop Twitter at some point just started reporting loads of football Twitter accounts, and then football Twitter started doing the same back to them, and it's just caused a war that, to be honest, has always been coming. You're wasting your time. If you're gonna stand for Footballers at least stand a good one. Zhong Shen Li plays for the Chinese national team alongside singing. A He's shite, to be honest. <laughs> Bolton could beat the Chinese national team and they aren't even gonna exist by Wednesday. This has been Twitter all week and I'm, I, I don't get why. Can someone please explain how this happened? I'm honestly absolutely buzzing for False Firmino versus Aesthetic Wu Jin next Tuesday. <laughs> but now it is time for Still Nil Nil and this is the segment where I take you through the best shenanigans in Sunday League football. Now this week we've got something quite special. A penalty is about to be taken by the team in white. Their forward is about to step up and try and slam this one home past the team in red's goalkeeper. He runs up. He takes it. It's saved by... Oh, no! If in doubt, put it in, I suppose. Actually, no, that's not a motto to live by. Where's the composure in all of this? You've got time. Just get it away. He's fully yammed it back in his own top bins. Поле начинает поливать, поэтому буду говорить максимально быстро. Илья Помазун, я остановлюсь еще мокрее и мокрее. Но я продолжаю. 
Красота. Ну вот, все равно продолжаю свой... I mean, I rate that. Nothing was stopping this reporter doing his job. Thinking about it, I'm pretty sure I know where he was. Эфир, в общем, сложно будет ССК. After having a year out of football due to a knee injury, I'm excited to announce I've signed for Millwall Lionesses. <coughs> all right, yo, listen. All right, so, big man, I'm, I'm a Millwall fan now. Um, in other news, Sean Dyche was spotted at Reading Festival. Imagine him after three hours of screaming his voice off at Foo Fighters. He'd be so hoarse you could ride him at the Grand National. And finally, over in Serbia, Red Star fans have brought a tank to sit outside the stadium for their next European game. <laughs> Why? Who has a tank lying about and is like, you know what? I'll take that to the football this afternoon. The UEFA's response was priceless. It's fine as long as it's not fired. Brilliant. It's good to know we're in safe hands. That though is it for football this week and I hope you have enjoyed it. Honestly, this week has been flipping carnage. Amongst the serious stuff going on at Bury and at Bolton, there has been a ridiculous amount of stupid stuff going on. If you've enjoyed this video, slap a like on it. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media it's at the official fng on twitter and on insta just hit 10k actually on instagram so cheers for that but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a great day enjoy yourselves and goodbye